subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss any video from my channel. Now we were an underdog movie company. We didn't have any money, not very much, but what we had an abundant amount of was Sylvester Stallone's belief in this movie and his passion. And it charged the air we all breathed. And we became a community, crew and actors who loved each other. And people often ask me, did you know what you were making? Well, you know, you never know. But amongst us, though we said it in just a whisper, we thought we were making something original and pure. Now, Rocky is a great boxing movie, but I like to think it was also a love story. Yeah. So, you know, about, boy, two unlikely people. And in one kiss, they're transformed. Adrian becomes, and remember, Sylvester wrote Adrian. This is his design from out of his ribs, so to speak. Adrian, she becomes his partner. She becomes a moral force, and she is forever in his corner. Now, I'd like to introduce to you my friend, someone I love, a man whose dream I got to perform in, and a man whose corner I will always be in, Sylvester Stallone. Ah, uh, the world's greatest cheerleader, Adrian. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, just being involved in this, the, the magic of uh, doing a film like this and how it happened is just a minor miracle. But then again, that's what really makes life interesting because you never know what's going to happen around every turn. You just try to keep believing in something. Uh, this film was never supposed to happen, but when you're young and foolish, you don't really adhere to the rules. And I think as you get older, you should keep practicing that. Just keep living your dream because you never know when it's going to happen. The uh, idea of doing this film was just to try to put into perspective, like, whatever, everyone has a dream, everyone has a slight dilemma in their life, will they ever going to make it? And then you get to a point where I may not make it to a certain level, but I can set my own goals. I may not be the best in the world, but at least I can... I can rise to a level that I can be confident and calm with and, and proud of myself. And so I think that's what the film is about. You may not be the best in the world, but you can be the best in your own life. And thanks. Now, I remember what was so interesting is like a couple of incidents in this film. When we were doing the love scene with Talia, uh, it, it was just very, very awkward because we were in this really grungy place and it was, I mean, it was hot and cold, running cockroach. It was truly, truly bad. Winos banging on the door, wanting their room back. I mean, it was low, low budget. <laughs> and they were going to actually pull the plug. I mean, I thought it was a term, but they, people had their hands pulling the plug. And I said, no, no, we got to do this, this, uh, this love scene. I said, no, can we just like, you know, work our way around it? I said, no, no, it's really important. And, and, and I had uh, been i wondering, how, how am I going to do this? Because, first of all, she has the flu. And I know I have to kiss her, but I have to work the next day, because this, this film was done in 28 days. So we, there was no chance for sickness. Sickness didn't count. But I'm looking at her, and she's all glassy-eyed and gorgeous there. And I'm going, but I know it's going to be murderous. Anyway, action. I start going over there, and I'm saying, OK, uh, let me try to kiss her and support her without trying to fall, because I have to go along the wall. My leg is buckling. And I know that I have to kiss her. So, OK, fine. Action. And when I took her glasses off, she just was, it was unbelievable. I mean, I actually forgot that she was a walking influenza. <laughs> I, I, I didn't care about that would be in my deathbed the next day. I just felt that this was really something magical. And I've watched that scene a million times, and I don't think any actress in the world ever played that moment better in history of a true awakening of her femininity. It was unbelievable. And even though I did get the flu, <laughs> I got wiser. I saw, I saw perfection that day. And there was one other scene that I think is really funny that uh, I wrote a scene about the, in the ice skating rink. So the thing was 300 extras, and I was supposed to be showing up there, and, uh, and it was our first date. 
And I get, <laughs> I don't know if we got a car, I think I, we arrived there by bus, and I get off and they say, uh, well, slight change in plans. Uh, the number's been cut down. I said, oh, okay, no, I can work with that. I go, whoa. How many, 100? No. 50, no. How many, how many ice skaters do we have? He goes, none, zero. <laughs> zero! So you, imagine you just walk in there, and nobody prepares you. So you walk in, and you look into this place, and you go, hello, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> I went, wow. This, this, this is going to be a disaster. This is truly going to be horrible because she can't really skate. As you saw, I can't. I run along the ice. But it just shows you that it was a thousand times better, just the isolation of just two people out there communicating on this cold wasteland than having 300. So sometimes accidents happen for a good reason. Anyway, thank you very, very much. I appreciate you. And keep punching. Subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon.